and good evening to you. Welcome to high school basketball action on Central Illinois Sports. 2024 has arrived and basketball action is hot and heavy throughout West Central Illinois. Tonight we're at Boschel Gymnasium as the Pittsfield Lady Sockies with a record of 8-7 and seven, play host to the 3-18 and 18, Payson Seymour Lady Indians. Alongside Jack and John Hull, I'm Charlie Hull. Glad you're with us for this high school ladies action. Pittsfield coming off of a 3-1 and one finish at the Beardstown Tournament, losing their opening game, but then winning three in a row, looking to keep their win streak alive here tonight at home against a Pace and Seymour squad that wins have been a little harder to come by for this team this year, but they're trying to build that program into something that's a little more sustainable, and Don Miller and company are working really hard to do just that for this Lady Indians team. We'll talk more about the matchup on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show after this. Are you looking to streamline your banking? Great Rivers Bank has just what you need with our streamlined checking and savings accounts. Earn high interest rates or get cash back on debit card purchases with your qualifying account. Plus, ATM fee refunds. Certain qualifications required. Call or visit our website today at www.greatriversbank.bank to get started. Great Rivers Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. At Logan AgriService, we consider it a badge of honor to be recognized as one of the larger independent suppliers of crop protection chemicals in the Midwest. We've worked hard for years to provide you with the access to the best herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides from top manufacturers because we know without you, our local farmers, we wouldn't be here. When you have questions, call our local experts to discuss what works best for your fields in your situation or visit us online at loganag.com. Serving agriculture since 1962. Grab the game while your kids are busy. You know, streaming, gaming, and homework. Now you can teach your kids the value of a dollar by showing bundles with Cascom. Bundle telephone, internet, and TV. Bundle two for a double play or three for a triple play. Plus, save $20 a month for three months for a limited time. Then you can tell everyone how you help them with their math homework. Call Cascom about bundles today at 1-800-252-1799. Cascom at 1-800-252-1799. Here at Little Jess, we value hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership. We have a respect for heritage and tradition and believe in the pursuit of building legacies, breaking records, and putting forth award-winning results. That's why supporting schools and local teams is one of our favorite and most exciting parts of our business. For over seven decades, we strive daily to use those same values as a foundation to meet our community's automotive needs and support our future generations. Little Jess Motors, serving our community since 1969. Luke and Aaron Fessler at Fessler Insurance are here to help you with all of your insurance needs. Fessler Insurance, a country financial agency, provides life, health, auto, home, and farm insurance. Trust your insurance needs to the local folks at Fessler Insurance. Call for a quote today at 217-285-4429 or stop by at 1165 West Washington Street in Pittsfield for Fessler Insurance. Best Systems Insulators offer insulation for homes and commercial buildings throughout Central Illinois and the surrounding areas. We take great care to ensure that the insulation products we use are the best fit for our clients and their project. We understand that different buildings have different needs and that each of our clients has a unique set of goals. Let us work with you to find the best solution for your next project. Call Best Systems Insulators at 217-285-6005. That's 285-6005. Or visit them online at Go Best Systems. Systems.com. Kate Marable, real estate broker with Hometown Real Estate, would like to say good luck to all area teams and hopes everyone has a successful and healthy season. When you're in the market for a new home or would like to sell your home, be sure to call Kate Marable. Kate is a lifelong resident of the area and has experience in first-time home buyers, FHA, USDA, and VA loans. Call Kate Marable at 217-370-9809. That's 370-9809 for Kate Marable and Hometown Real Estate. Welcome back to Voschel Gymnasium and tonight's matchup between Pittsfield and Payson Seymour on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show with locations in Pittsfield, Barry, Liberty, and Hannibal. Great Rivers Bank serving the entire region with the best banking services close to where you live. And learn more at greatriversbank.bank or stop by the location nearest you. Well, Pittsfield coming off of the Beardstown Tournament, a disappointing loss in the opening round play-in game to Athens as the Lady Sockies 
were the 16 seed, but Pittsfield rebounded nicely and won the games that they had scheduled through the rest of the week, finished with a record of 3-1 and one in tournament play and have crept their record over the 500 mark at 8-7. and seven. They're playing here tonight at home against Pace and Seymour and then again home on Thursday evening with a 6 o'clock varsity-only start time against the Pleasant Hill Western Lady Wolves. So Pittsfield's team starting off the new year with a couple of home games. And, Jack, the only thing I will say about it is that I understand how programs don't have enough players to play JV. But why do these start times continue to be at 6 o'clock? It just seems like it does a disservice to the young ladies because there's a lot of fans who would be coming to a varsity game. They could be here by 7, but maybe not necessarily 6 o'clock, especially on some of these winter nights. Well, you, you get to a point where you go, well, we've always done it like this, so why are we going to continue to do it like this when it, it's very easily easily changed? And it's it's kind of like with a team we're going to see Thursday night when they knew that their basketball programs were going to have not really have JV teams most of the time. It's been pretty easy to move that varsity girls game and varsity boys game to the same time for Pleasant Hill. But, you know, we've done it like that forever, and we all kind of become like churches. We just never change. But getting it at 7 o'clock on a, a night like this would have given a lot more people an opportunity to come to the game and support the young ladies. And it's, <clears throat> I asked you this yesterday when we were having lunch. Why are they playing this game on a Tuesday and the boys' game on a Wednesday? I was a little bit confused by that one. Well, I think everything got messed up a little bit because of the holiday week, and I think you kind of see, especially in our area with the Winchester tournament, you see a lot of boys' games being played on Wednesday or Thursday, not many Friday night matchups in the area just because there aren't so many teams participating in that tournament that is coming up on Saturday. We have action for you tomorrow night from Griggsville Perry as the Tornadoes take on North Green at a high school boys' basketball matchup. 7.30 varsity tip there. Pittsfield is on the road at Pleasant Plains. We'll also have that action for you on Central Illinois Sports. Thursday evening, we have girls' action for you here from Voshla Gym at 6 o'clock, Pleasant Hill Western and Pittsfield. And at 7.30, Camp Point Central and West Hancock on the boys' side at Camp Point Central. Friday evening, we're back here at Voshla Gym as the Sockies welcome in Quincy Notre Dame to town. And then on Saturday, we'll have action from the 101st Winchester Invitational Tournament. First game at 9 o'clock, Payson Seymour and Camp Point Central all the way throughout the day with the last game starting at 8.30 in the evening. We hope you'll join us for all of the action on Central Illinois Sports. Tell your friends where they can watch it as well. And, of course, thank the sponsors who make it possible for us to bring these games to you. And let's pause to hear from some of those folks right now. Here in Pittsfield, we're focused on maintaining a healthy, diverse economic base to increase opportunities for our residents. Economic factors greatly affect a community's overall potential, and we strive to continue our prosperous culture. The availability of both commercial and industrial employment centers and new lucrative entrepreneurship opportunities are major assets for growth and development here in Pittsfield. In addition to providing employment and income to people, Pittsfield also boasts several tax incentive districts to further facilitate economic growth. Examples of growth and success can be seen throughout Pittsfield. Pittsfield is located within Pike County and widely known for the abundance of white-tailed deer and is also home to companies that have capitalized from the region's natural resources. Located over on Madison Street, Whitetail Properties is a major local and international employer that truly embodies the local and economic spirit of Pittsfield. State-of-the-art communications and telecommuting are available here. Be sure to catch their televised series throughout the week on the Sportsman Channel. Come grow and be a part of something great in Pittsfield, Illinois. I love training. I like to help people improve on their tasks. That food has been providing everything for me. They just treat you so well. When my life needed an opportunity, I chose that. The heart is the hardest working muscle in your body. If something goes wrong with it, you need a medical team that works just as hard. You need Blessing Health's Open Heart Surgery Team celebrating 20 years of delivering life-saving care to tri-state residents. Patients and families choose Blessing Health's Open Heart Surgery Team for its experience, quality, and heartwarming compassion. Get the most out of your hard-working heart. 
Make your dream kitchen and bath a reality with help from Pike County Lumber. We'll create a design to fit your lifestyle and your needs. Quartz countertops, quality onyx that offers dozens of colors. From start to finish, trust the knowledge and experience at Pike County Lumber. Griffin Signs in Time at 122 South 9th Street in Quincy is a full-service sign company that can complete any project. From fully wrapping your entire fleet of vehicles, digital signs, storefronts, to creating small banners and signs. The right and professional signage is the difference of getting the job, heading folks in the correct direction to find you, or creating a brand recognition for potential customers. Put the right signs in your customer's mind with Griffin Signs in Time. Call 217-228-7470. Welcome back on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. Both teams out of the court preparing for this contest. It's been... A struggle for this Payson Seymour squad. Lone numbers, just seven young ladies out for the squad. But, uh, Jack, it's one of those things when, you know, for a while Payson Seymour was with Liberty. For a while they and Western were together. Now they're back on their own again. And when you have lower numbers, I mean, sometimes that's just what you have to work with. It's a team that has two freshmen, two sophomores, and three juniors on the team. So no seniors. So if you're Don Miller, you're really trying to build this program into something and get some positives as the second half of the season starts here and be working for some postseason success potentially and into next year. I, I'm not sure what happens, but usually, you know, a couple of those people from Payson were top quality players that helped that program along the way at Liberty in that co-op situation. And you get a little hungry and you kind of want your girls to do that. Pleasant Hill came to Pittsfield for a while. Uh, Griggsville Perry tried that. Now they're back trying to get their junior high program built. But the key on building the girls' programs is building numbers. People like West Central have proven that over the years. Pittsfield's got their numbers up a little bit. But you, the ones with success that are at the top of their game usually have 20, 25 people in your program. And that's going to be hard to do at a 1A school most of the time. Lady Saki's kind of got into a weird funk after a pretty decent start to the season, and they kind of are trying to still work their way out of that. I think that success at Beardstown will help just get some positives going their way, but they've got a tough schedule here coming up. They've added Pleasant Plains on the schedule. is very good. They're still going to play Quincy Notre Dame. They've got Camp Point Central in the second half of the season. It doesn't get easier for Pittsfield by any stretch in the uh, second half. And, and you know when you notice what people like Matt Long have done over the years at Camp Point Central, I, I love it how people will go, well, he just has these athletes every year. You know, this is a program over there. They're doing it without the Stevens girl, who's a pretty good basketball and volleyball player. And, uh, you know, I'm sure at locker room talk when you're down by 15 in the championship game is probably a little bit direct. But Matt's done it with the defensive side. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like watching top programs and everything. They're doing it with conditioning, speed, playing defense first. And, you know, it's working across the country, people like, Mizzou beating an Ohio State in the bowl game. Defense still wins championships. Oh, were there football games yesterday? I didn't see those, but uh, I think there'll be another one Monday night. But, you know, there's a little thing called the Winchester Invitational Tournament that starts yeah. on Saturday as well, Jack. And I looked at the extended forecast for next week, and it looks like we might see some winter weather. I, I can't believe that. Last year we made it all the way through in the 100th. I don't know if God was just blessing us with that. But, you know, we can all stay at Kent Coldest's house if we have to. But I think we'll get back and forth most of the time and be able to call those games. And we're looking forward to that tournament after having some time off after Christmas for the first time. How'd that feel for you? It's been a while since we've called the game. Back. Glad to be back at it. Hopefully remember how to still do this. We are just moments away from the Star Spangled Banner, the starting lineups on the play-by-play -play of this contest between the Pittsfield Lady Sockies and the Pace and Seymour Lady Indians. A final break on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. The Fireman Home Supply starting lineups your way next. Are you short on time or budget but your family is hungry? It's time for the Maya Authentic Mexican Restaurant in Pittsfield. Try the Maya Special, a crowd favorite. Delicious grilled fajitas, steaks, nachos Mexicano, salads in the tortilla bowl, the tastiest salsa and cheese sauce around, and the fastest service anywhere. You can afford it. It's the Maya Mexican Restaurant on Washington Street. Call ahead with your order and you can pick it up in the drive through 217-285-4526. The Maya Restaurant in Pittsfield. For nearly 40 years, the Niebuhr Funeral Home has been serving our area with professionalism and compassion. This is our business, our hometown. You can be assured we take great personal pride in serving your family in your time of loss. We're locally owned. We're your friends and neighbors. We care about you and your family. Niebuhr Funeral Home, with locations in Pittsfield and Barrie. 
serving our community with compassion and respect. It's the start of the new year, and it's one of your New Year's resolutions in order to make your dollar stretch further. Then you don't want to miss the Dollar Day sale at your local Farm Homes Supply running January 5th through the 14th. Here are some of the hottest deals. Get $15 off all Wrangler Retro Denim. We'll give you a free $15 gift card when you purchase any 30-pound or more Purina Pro Plan dog food. Tide Simply Laundry Detergent is only 8 bucks. Need a heater? Our most popular milk house heater is only $17. See all the deals and much more right now at farmandhomesupply.com. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Farm and Home Supply. Hey, looking to stay warm this winter? Check out the great clothing options for you at your local Farm and Home Supply and learn more at farmandhomesupply.com. For the Payson Lady Indians, Don Miller, their head coach, they'll start at a guard, a 5'7 junior. That's Allie Bauer at a second guard. She's a 5'8 junior, Sam Hugenberg. And at the third guard, she is a 5'7 junior, Grace Klitz. At a forward, she is a 5'8 junior, Ella Archer. And at the other four, the 5'8 sophomore, Maddie O'Deer. O'Deer, Klitz, Archer, Hugenberg, and Bauer for Payson Seymour. For the Pittsfield Lady Sockies, 8 and 7 on the year. They'll start at a guard, a 5'7 junior. That's Lila Simon at a second guard, a 5'8 senior, Laney Maribow. And at the third guard, the 5'6 freshman, Sophie Gingler. Out of four, the 5'10 senior, Allie Stambaugh. And at the other four, the 5'9 junior, Madison Frieden. Frieden, Stambaugh, Gingler, Maribow, and Simon for the eight and seven Lady Sockies. Hey, we got a Klitz out here. I was hoping maybe Gage would be here too. If this girl goes up and dunks two-handed, we'll know she's a sister. Here's the tip up and controlled by the Lady Sockies to start tonight, and we are underway in high school girls basketball action on Central Illinois Sports. Left side, Gingler with the ball against the zone defense of Payson Seymour. Throws it out between the circles to Simon. Calls out the play call here. Works the ball on the right wing. That's to Marable. Out top, Kingler. Over on the left wing, Simon. Feeds the post and Stambaugh. Good pass down low. Marable finds Stambaugh, who puts it up and in for two. That was Frieden, I do believe. Frieden for two. Dude, just let me finish. <laughs> and it's 2 nothing Pittsfield. Into the front court come the Lady Indians with their first attack of the night. As O'Deer has it. She'll work it off on the right side. That's Grace Klitz. She'll put up a three off their iron. No good. Rebound on the offensive side up by Archer won't fall. And this time the rebound down to Frieden for Pittsfield. Quickly pushing the pace into the front court. Simon on the runner off the window. No good. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay on this end with the Lady Sockies. Just underway here in quarter number one on the PCRE scoreboard. It's an early 2-0 Pittsfield advantage. Out of bounds right side behind the arc. Three-point shot up and good by Simon. And she gives Pittsfield a 5-0 advantage. I like her shooting that with good confidence. That'll help break a team out of a zone. Now here's the ball stolen away by Stambaugh. Gets it to Simon. Quickly into the corner, Marable to Stambaugh. Good give and go. Down low and in for two. And Pittsfield races out to a 7-0 lead. A minute and 15 seconds into the contest. Using the advantage with the height and getting it to both of the girls down low. Now a long pass into the front court. Matty O'Deer breaks free. She'll put it off the window and in for two. And the Indians do a nice job of breaking the press that time around. Saki's a little slow getting back on that one. The coaching staff will try to make that adjustment. 
Stambaugh with it on the wing right side. Bounces to Frieden at the high post. Out top to Gingler. Pittsfield's coaching staff a little short-handed tonight as Matt Henry's home a little under the weather, and we welcome him alongside watching. Matt, it's a, I told you today, it's a lot easier to coach from right here, I can. <laughs> Could have zoomed him into the broadcast, I think. We can even we can even referee from this vantage point at times. On the right side, it's Gingler to Marable. Left side, Simon trying the three from the left-hand side. Won't fall. Offensive rebound down to Frieden. She'll put it up off the high glass and in for two. I was just going to say, Frieden needs to be a little bit un or selfish about putting those shots up, and that time she did and got the tough runner to go off the glass. Klitz brings it into the front court for Pace and Seymour. 535 to play in the first. Long pass is tipped and stolen away by Frieden. Active on the defensive end is Pittsfield. Into the front court, Gingler's pass nearly stolen away by a hustling alley Bauer, and she'll get the steal, but then will be called for the travel. Turnover the first on Pittsfield, the third on the Lady Indians. Both teams went after the ball on the floor, and that's what you're looking for is aggressiveness after the Christmas break to see how you're going to come out for the second half of the season. Down low, they'll feed the ball into Stanball. Off to Gingler. Wigwags inside, and three seconds will be the call. And a turnover on the Lady Sockies, their second. I think only the second three-second call I've seen all season, one of them was in the junior high girls state tournament. Just don't see it much anymore. It is not, it is not a call that is... Uh, very prevalent these days. Archer with it in the backcourt. Gets it across to Grace Klitz. Takes it to the top of the key, looking for a cutter. Finds her teammate in Hugenberg. Hugenberg penetrates on the right side. Pass the defender and in for two. Good take to the hole by Hugenberg. And cuts the Pittsfield lead down to five. She showed quickness that time on that first step. Sam Hugenberg is a junior for this Lady Indians team. Now top Stamball works it over to Simon on the left side. Skip pass to Stamball, puts it on the deck. Trying to throw the pass down low and gets the ball caught on her hip. Call for a travel. Three turnovers on each side nearly going here. 437 left first quarter. 9-4 is the score. Sockies with the lead on the PCRE real estate and auction scoreboard. Archer into the front court, close to over and back, has a pass stolen away by Stambaugh, her second, and then she is tripped up and the ball is knocked loose, run down by a hustling Lila Simon. Keeps her eyes up, finds Gingler from a 15-footer, won't fall. Rebound fought for, and Matty O'Deer muscles it away from Frieden this time to secure the board. O'Deer ripped it away that time and showed some good strength. Hugenberg into the front court, dribbles past the defenders, looked for the pass on the weak side, had O'Deer, but the pass was a little wide, and it is turned over as it goes out of bounds. Turnover starting to build a little bit, five of them in the first three minutes and 53 seconds of the first quarter of play. Out of bounds here for Pittsfield, up 9-4 on the PCRE scoreboard, halfway through period number one. The corner, Gingler gets it, works it down low. Frieden, good post move off the window. Can't get it to roll through. And the rebound secured this time by Ella Archer. Gets it off to Hugenberg, and she'll look to bring it up here for the Lady Indians. Pittsfield's dropped back into a half-court man-to-man defense now. Out top, Archer. She'll start a dribble, looking to get a little movement offensively are the Indians. Gets it over to Klitz. Klitz drives the lane. Window no good, but she's fouled on the play. She'll head to the free throw line, shooting two shots. First foul of the ball game will be called against Allie Stamball, her first team first, and it will go the way of free throws here. Now for the first one being up and good, that's by Klitz. Grace Klitz with her first free throw. Alana Express now located on the campus of Alana Community Hospital in Pittsfield, 640 West Washington, just across from McDonald's, learn more about all the services they offer on a walk-in basis at IlliniHospital.org. Second one wouldn't fall. Rebound comes off to Sophie Gingler. Gingler with the board, takes it into the front court, works it on the right side. Down low to Henry, who's fresh into the game, and in for two. Grace Henry, the 5'9 junior with the basket, and extends Pittsfield's lead back out to six. Here's a ball now kicked in the backcourt by Laney Marable. It'll stay with the Indians. On the baseline, length of the court to go. While we have a break in the action, we do want to remind you about Bowler's Universe. They're open Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Fridays until midnight, Saturdays 4 to midnight. They have a great menu for you. And always a good time on the bowling lanes as well at Bowler's Universe in Pittsfield. Here's a long pass trying to find O'Deer into the front court, and she just could not 
corral it and a turnover on the Indians. Will there be a Queen of Hearts drawing tomorrow night? There's not. We're off for a week. I don't think you got enough people to cover all the things you're going to be covering tomorrow. That's right. No Queen of Hearts tomorrow night. I saw a couple big winners over in Adams County last week. It's about time Adams County had some winners. <laughs> Out top with it is Simon, a long two-point shot, lets it fly no good. Rebound down to Marable. She'll put it up on the right-hand runner, won't fall. Frieden with the board, put it up, blocked. Another rebound for Pittsfield as Marable comes out with it to Henry, whose shot won't fall. Marable then gets the rebound and is promptly tackled by her teammate in Frieden and will be called for the travel. Madison Frieden said, I didn't mean to do that, but she kind of got her feet caught together, and both those teammates going after the ball caused the turnover. 2.34 left first quarter. 11 to 5, Lady Stockies, but Payson trying to cut into that. You don't mind aggressive turnovers, though, yeah. like that. Here's a runner put up by Grace Klitz. She'll find the angle that time and puts it in for her second basket of the contest and make it 11 7. Nice high window and really soft touch that time. Henry with it on the right wing. Works at free throw line to Frieden. Shot fake, puts it on the deck. In traffic had it knocked loose, but run down here. Back to Gingler on the right side. Deep in the corner to Henry. She'll dribble out to the wing. Top of the key, Simon. Fakes now drives, gets inside. Runner up, no good. Did everything but make the basket. And on the rebound, it's a tie-up. And it's Pace and Seymour basketball on the alternating possession arrow. Archer picked up her second board before she was tied up by Lila Simon. And that still remains the way of Pace. Did you put an extra syllable in that word? I did. I learned that from a guy I watched the other day at one state championship said this is going to be the funnest week of your life. Here's a reach and foul in the backcourt called on Marable. It's only the second foul of the game and the first on Lady Marable. Funnest? You don't like that word? Well, I like it a lot. It's going to be the most fun weekend of your life. Here's a ball and dribble out of bounds by Hugenberg and a turnover on the Lady Indian sends the ball back Pittsfield's direction. Four-point game with 146 to play here in the first. Seven turnovers that way now on the Payson squad. Gingler works it to Henry behind the arc right side. Back out to Gingler, kind of a soft zone now. Gingler had that position where she could have got the ball to the free throw line and got that nice shot if she'd have taken it. Here's a move down low by Henry, aggressive on the offensive side. Her shot is no good, but is fouled, and she'll head to the free throw line shooting a pair. First foul on Payson. That'll go against Hugenberg. Her first team first of the quarter, 128 left first quarter. 11-7, to seven. Saki's led by seven a couple of times. Henry puts the first one up, and it's good. Grace Henry with three now. The Pike County Express, or local family-owned newspaper, they have been serving Pike County since 1991. Check them out tomorrow. That's right. It's Wednesday tomorrow on a newsstand near you. Second one up by Henry. In and out, no good. Rebound comes off the other way to O'Deer. That's her second defensive board. She'll get it to Hugenberg on the run out into the front court. Drives inside. Kicks it left side to Bauer, but was fouled first on the floor. Didn't have many fouls. Now they're building up a little bit. Lila Simons with her first. Out of bounds underneath here for the Lady Indians as Klitz will look to throw it in. Bounce pass comes into her teammate Archer. Back out to Grace Klitz. Drive, stops on a dime. Shot block and a rebound here for Henry. She's then tied up with Klitz and the alternating possession arrow favors the Lady Sockies this time. Henry with a block, a defensive board, the jump ball. Good job by Payson fighting for it. And we'll see the possession go the way of the Lady Sockies. Up by five with just over a minute to play in the game's opening quarter. Gingler, bounce pass down low. Turnaround shot. Frieden finds the mark once again. Madison Frieden with another two. And Pittsfield's lead is out to seven with under 60 seconds to play in the first. Third time they've had a seven-point lead. Frieden was six in the first quarter. Here's Klitz. Drives to the baseline. Looks for the cutter in the lane. Finds Archer. The ball loose in the paint. Picked up, given to her teammate in O'Deer, who puts it up and in for two, and she's fouled. She'll have an and one opportunity here for the Lady Indians. Simon's going to pick up her second foul in the first quarter. She'll have to sit down. Williams will check in for her with 45 seconds left in the quarter, a 14-9 game. And O'Deer with a nice, strong move, and she used her strength to get that one to fall in, the chance for the three-point play. Eyes it up and good. Makes it a four-point game again as she completes the three-point play. 43 seconds to play in the first. 
Gingler feeds the post and Henry now. She goes to work. Shot up off the front of the iron, no good. Rebound to Maddie O'Deer. O'Deer just a sophomore for this squad. Her outlet pass comes to Hugenberg. On the dribble with 28 seconds. Now the ball knocked loose. Everybody on the floor after it, and it's secured by Bauer. Off on the right side to Klitz with 20 seconds to play in the first. Works off of the screen, drives the lane, and gets called for the travel. Guard penetration's been a problem. Payson's been able to find those openings, but they uh, drug the foot that time on their eighth turnover. 16 seconds for the Sockies to build on this four-point lead. Gingler into the front court. At the top of the key with 10. Play-by-play -play after this. One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Derek Harris is your Pike and Adams County area Edward Jones financial advisor. Derek Harris's most important goals are yours. That's why Derek will take the time to understand your needs so he can recommend personalized strategies with your goals in mind. Contact Derek Harris today at 217 222 7173. Knowing you, that's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Member SIPC. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You've heard that phrase many times in Rod Prentice in Pittsfield. Your State Farm agent is the guy you can count on to be your friend and neighbor in the insurance business. He has a complete line of insurance available for you from State Farm Insurance. You can reach him at 217-285-6930. Our family trusts Rod Prentice with all of our insurance needs. Stop by their office on Washington Street and see the girls in Rod Prentice, your State Farm agent, 217-285-6930. Ready to start quarter number two. It's a 14-10 lead for Pittsfield over Pace and Seymour. The Lady Indians have the basketball to start quarter number two. Six of 17 to the Lady Sockies, 36%. One of three from the arc, one of two from the free throw line. Four of seven for Payson. Need to get some more shots up. Here's a turnover now by Pace and Seymour. That's been a problem as Henry has it taken away and knocked away, excuse me, from behind after getting the steal. It'll stay with Pittsfield underneath their own hoop. I like Payson's hustle after they knocked the ball away. The Pittsville players kind of stopped, and Payson kept playing for the ball. A lot of bounds comes in and is stolen away by Allie Bauer. Had to save it in bounds. Now it's a tie-up. It'll be Pittsville ball on the alternating possession row. And, yes, right now this Payson-Seymour squad is the more aggressive team. Ten turnovers on Payson, five on Pittsville. But Pittsville really needs to get a little fire right now and get hungry for this win because they – are the highly favored team in this contest. Gingler with it, works in the corner to Henry. Henry puts it on the deck, right back to Gingler. Feeds the post in Frieden. Frieden, turnaround shot off the back iron, no good. Rebound down to Hugenberg. One shot on each one of these because there's four Payson Seymour girls around the basket after the missed shot. Hugenberg now drives to the corner, might have turned an ankle on a turnover here. Gingler on the run out into the front court with a three on one. She drives in to the rim. And in for two on the run out by Sophie Gingler. First points of the second quarter give the Lady Sockies a 16-10 lead on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard. Ball handoff. Gingler trying to get another steal. Hustling on the court and got the deflection. Frieden gets the steal. She'll take it the other way and a reach-in foul called on Allie Bauer. Her first team first to the second quarter. 6.55 left in the half. A 16-10 Lady Saki lead. And Laney Marable will be the trigger person, but not before Bauer comes, or uh, Stanball comes back in and Taylor Peebles. Ooh, they didn't get him checked in. I'll be darned. There's a shot put up no good from the wing. And the rebound down to Ella Archer for Pace and Seymour. Don Miller was having a little discussion with the official. I think that's why they didn't get the subs in that time. Here's a pass down low. Look back door. They find Grace Klitz. Her shot is up and no good, but she's fouled on a nice back door look that time, and she'll head to the free throw line shooting two. Grace Henry picks up her first of the ball game, first of the second quarter on the Lady Sockies, and that was a pretty pass. That looked like the back doors that the boys team from Pittsfield have run for a long time. First one is up and good. Good free throw shooting by Klitz. She's two for three from there and has four points. Hey, check out Reels just north of Pittsville across from the airport, your local headquarters for concrete lawn ornaments, statues, fountains, and much, much more. Stop by and see Rick and Tracy and all the gang at Reels or call 217-285-5013. Second one no good. Rebound comes off to Gingler. Into the front court, Sophie Gingler on the run. Drives to the baseline, finds the open player in the middle, and Stambaugh, who finds the window and in for two. She's got four. And again, the Pittsville lead is seven. 
Four times they've led by this amount. You wonder with this Pace and Seymour squad with the lack of depth, as here's a pull-up jump shot, good look by Sam Hugenberg. If they, you know, very competitive here in the first half, you just kind of wonder with the lack of an, an option to sub if they don't wear down a little bit. Here's Peebles on a put back off of the missed shot. She'll put it up and in for her first two as Taylor Peebles, the 5'9 junior, fresh out of the contest and in with a basket. She adds some size for this squad when Peebles does, and now a timeout for Payson will take it too. This is a Adams Network, Adams Fiber timeout on the court. We'll be back and tell you more after this. three to play in the half. 20 to 13 is the lead for Pittsfield on top of Pace and Seymour. This break in the action brought to you by Adams Fiber. They're local and providing the ultimate internet experience with Wi-Fi 6 and internet packages with speeds up to 1 gigabit. Visit followthefiber.net. Those that have Adams brag about it a lot. Good stuff. Out of bounds for the Indians on the sideline just in the front court. I'd say Coach Miller's got to kind of time those uh, timeouts out a little bit as short as he is on the number of people he put in for substitutions. Here's a tie-up now as the ball kind of took a weird bounce on the point guard, Hugenberg. Possession arrow favors Payson. Payson Seymour. Out of bounds underneath here. Archer to throw it in. Looking, looking. Gets the ball down low to O'Deer. Turnaround shot is up and no good. Had a good look at it. Rebound loose underneath and coming out of there with it is Williams for Pittsfield. Hannah Williams on the dribble into the front court. Works it out top to Gingler. To Marable on the left wing. Back out front. Gingler reverses to Williams. Looks in the corner now. Stamba feeds Peebles. Shot up from 10. No good. On the rebound out of there with it is Sam Hugenberg. She'll slow down the pace for Pace and Seymour. I like Peebles coming in and not being afraid to shoot the ball. Hugenberg drives inside, kind of puts up a turnaround shot, no good off balance, and Peebles with the rebound for Pittsfield. She throws the outlet pass to Marable, who had kind of turned to run down the court. Pittsfield lucky not to have a turnover right there. Gingler, pull-up jump shot off the one bounce, no good. Archer with the rebound for the Indians, and Don Miller says let's walk it up. 4.50 to play in the half. In a seven-point contest on the PCRE scoreboard. Anna Williams much more aggressive than I've seen her in the past. Like to see that from her. Hugenberg kicks to the corner to Klitz. Klitz with a pull-up jump shot, no good. Rebound Archer won't fall. Rebound loose. Out of bounds, and it will go the way of the Lady Sockies as Simon will come back into the game along with Frieden. Peebles takes the chair, as does Gingler. Hot. Uh on the boards, uh, Payson being very aggressive on the offensive and defensive side, both. And Lady Saki's getting position, but not ripping the ball down right now. Stand ball, little give and go to Marable down low. Kind of bangs off of the defender. Gets it into Frieden. Gains her balance. Shot just won't fall this time. And the rebound pulled in by Archer. Gets Archer's it to Hugenberg. Four boards on the day now. Hugenberg walks it across the center circle. Simon playing with those two fouls has to be careful. Now here's a three put up no good by Bauer. And the rebound down to Williams for Pittsville, her second. She'll push it into the front court. Looks in the paint. Finds Frieden. Frieden turns around over two defenders and gets it to go. Madison Frieden with another two. And Pittsville has their largest lead of the contest, this nine-point advantage. Frieden with eight on the day. And her first points in the second quarter. And now a steal by Lila Simon out front. Larceny at one end. Layup at the other is blocked by Hugenberg. Simon gets it back and will pull it out front. Now try to work it into Stambaugh. She's bumped and fouled from behind by Matty O'Deer. 
Odier is going to pick up the foul? Nope. No, I, I led you. So. I led you astray yep. that time. That Jack. time, it's going to be Archer. It's going to pick up her first team second. Inbounds pass is then knocked loose. Coming out of there with it was Marable, whose shot is no good, and Odier gets the rebound. She saved the turnover. Then a turnover by Pace and Seymour as Hugenberg had it knocked away. Down low to Marable, who travels. Nice but find by Simon that time, though. She found Marable. Kind of shocked her on that Larry Bird pass, and she just took the extra step. Timeout on the court. We will pause as well for this Adams Network timeout. 3.17 to play in the half. It's Pittsfield 22, Pace and Seymour 13. At Farmer State Bank, we believe in community, teamwork, and success. We're thrilled to announce that we've been named the best place to work in Illinois and the best community bank in America this year. Join us on this winning team where your dreams take center court at Farmer State Bank. We're a team. Discover the difference. The best place to bank, the best place to work. Because when our community wins, we all win. Where community, excellence, and opportunity come together. Farmer State Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. At Full Throttle Parts, we do spray on bed liners. A brand called Patriot Liner. It is very elite. It actually enhances the resale value of anything you put it on, on or off road. Go full throttle. Go full throttle. Three minutes, 17 seconds to play in the half. Pace and Seymour took their second time out of the half. Breaking the action brought to you by Adams Experts with top notch local computer sales and service. Call Adams Experts 217 214 3423 for fast, friendly, and affordable service. Payson will have the basketball trailing by nine. Biggest lead for the Sockies of the night. Hugenberg on the bounce. Works off of the screen. Bounce pass down low. Out of bounds. Turnover on the Indians. They're 15th after having six in the first quarter. This quarter's been tough on them in the first six minutes or five minutes. Into the front court, Marable works it down on the baseline. That's to Stambaugh. And it's kind of what we talked about earlier. You kind of wonder if they just start to wear down a bit. Here's Frieden. Nice to lane shot up, no good. And on the rebound, Stambaugh will be called over the back. Stambaugh will pick up her second foul. It'll be the second team foul of the quarter. Frieden had a good look there, but with the left hand, just shot it a little bit too hard. Indians with the basketball. Down by nine. It's been a while since they put points on the board. Hugenberg still on the dribble, works off of the screen. Off to Klitz now. She'll pull it out front. Again, Stambaugh guarding hard with those two fouls. To Hugenberg, drives the baseline. Help side defender slides in front, rebound a tie-up, and it'll go the way of the Lady Sockies. Into the contest, returning is Grace Henry. She'll sit. Stambaugh down with two fouls. Also back into the contest. Gangler returns as Williams heads to the bench. Lady Saki's looking for a double-digit lead with 2.25 to play in the half. Marable left wide open on the right side for a three, and she gets nothing but the bottom of the net. Her first points of the night, and she's one for one from there. 12-point advantage for the Lady Saki's. Hugenberg works off of the screen. Ooh, nice little crossover. Drives the lane. Shot up no good. Rebound fought for. It's another tie-up. This time it heads Pace and Seymour's direction on the possession arrow, and they'll get a second chance opportunity here. Many years ago in girls' basketball, you saw a lot of jump balls. Now the girls are strong and rip it away, but tonight, not quite as much. Inbounds pass comes to Archer. That time, Marable had gotten in a bad position. She got behind the player and fouls her on the shot. Two shots coming up for Archer. Second on Marable and the third on the Lady Sockies. Archer to the free throw line looking for her first points of the night. She's got four rebounds. First one is a high Archer off the bank and good. 25-14 now. Tim Waters and Waters Concrete. They offer quality concrete for your new build. Driveways, decorative patios, sidewalks, anything with concrete. It's Waters Concrete ready to serve you. Call 309-252-1052. Peebles back in the game. Second one by Archer is also good. This one, nothing but the bottom of the net. And makes it a 10-point game with just under two minutes to play in the half. Henry with it out front to Simon. Gets it over to Gingler. Gingler will put a single bounce on it. Works it to Peebles in the lane. Good find to Frieden, who has the good touch once again. 
Double digits for her now. Good ball movement by Pittsfield. Got the ball to the short corner, then the high post, and Frieden able to put it in for two more. Pass on the left side. First touch of the day for Erica Altoff, the freshman. Hugenberg now going to pull up for a three. No good. A rebound down to Henry as the ball knocked loose, and it is a battle for it out there right now. Frieden on the floor. Clitz on the floor. Jump ball. And the ball goes the way of Pittsfield on the held possession. Came close to a jump ball about five times, but nobody could secure it. And finally, the Lady Sockies tied it up. It's a little rough. Got a little physical. Gangler with it for Pittsfield. Ball gets reversed left side. Simon down to Frieden, who's had the hot hand. Puts it on the deck. Gets her shoulders squared. Shot won't go. Archer with another rebound for Pace and Seymour. Archer with her fifth. Gets it to Hugenberg and less than a minute to play in this first half. On the Little Jess Motors halftime show with halftime stats and more in just moments. Clitz with it. Tries to drive in. Gets a down low to Archer. Archer turnaround shot up no good. Rebound down to Hugenberg in the lane. She'll put it up and in for two for Pace and Seymour. Hugenberg has six now. With 35 seconds to play in the half. Gingler on the right side. Works it over to Frieden. In the middle finds Henry to the basket. Shot won't go, but she's fouled. On a nice find on the cutter that time by Frieden. Henry will shoot two. Hugenberg's going to pick up her second, third foul of the quarter. Henry goes back to the free throw line. On the night has three points, one for two from the charity stripe. 27-17, 28 seconds left in the half. And the first one a little strong by Grace. LSSC tracking and 3D leasing for all of your trucking and hauling needs. Call the Dunhams and their professional team at LSSD Tracking and 3D Leasing. 217-285-2808. Second one wouldn't fall. Fighting for the ball. Pace will get it on the tie-up as the two girls both came down with the ball in Archer and Frieden. Indians have it length of the court to go with 26.6 seconds to play in this first half. Henry's free throw looked like it was down, but it Rolled back out. Seen a couple shots do that on that end of this evening. Here's Hugenberg, and she'll get called for the travel. That time, Peebles did a nice job of tying her up, and she came back with the ball and was called for the miscue, the 16th of the ball game against Payson. It's for the 10-point lead in the waning moments of this first half. Gingler on the right side. Works it out top to Henry with eight. Ball fed in the post. Peebles, shot put up is good. Peebles with another two. Two seconds, one. Hugenberg, half-court shot, good if it goes. It is short, and we head to halftime. And the Little Jess Motors halftime show where the Pittsfield Lady Sockies lead the Pace and Seymour Lady Indians 29-17. There's a road that makes all the difference. The difference between the good and the great. A road less traveled for the few who can handle the grind. One of hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership. With a respect for heritage and tradition and a willingness to adapt. At Little Jess, we travel that road every day because we believe in that difference. And we dare our competition to try and keep up. Little Jess, serving the tri-state area since 1969. Hey, West Central Illinois, are you looking for a great deal on a vehicle? Well, at West Town Ford, we have a lot full of vehicles, cars, trucks, vans, SUVs. We've got them all, and a lot of them, at West Town Ford in Jacksonville. It's time to be thinking about tax planning. You can count on Illinois FBFM for accounting, consulting, and tax preparation for farmers and businesses in Pike, Brown, and Adams Counties. Call 217 217- 593-7233. That's 593-7233. Illinois FBFM can take care of your farm accounting needs. Get your accounts in order for this tax season. Contact Jesse Schumann and Emily Matthews at Illinois FBFM and Camp Point. Working for you. Pressures on you would like to wish all the area teams the best of luck this year. If you're looking to get your team shirts or just looking for spirit wear for yourself, remember Pressures on you. We have over 1,400 square foot of retail space in our shop. Stop by and see us and check out our offerings. Business lets us help you promote your brand. Decoration methods we offer include screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving. Thank you to everyone in our community for the support over the last 16 years. Thank you for supporting local. Pressures on you, 506 Westwood. Camp Point, Illinois. 
The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville with locations in Griggsville, Mount Sterling, and Pittsfield. Maybe you ask, why choose Farmers National Bank of Griggsville? The answer is simple. Local people, local decisions, and local commitment with local investments. We have many products and services to meet your needs. We invite you to find out more about us. Go to fmbgriggsville.com and explore all the services we offer. Visit any of our three friendly locations in Mount Sterling, Griggsville, and Pittsfield today. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville, local people helping local people, member FDI. I see. Damon Plumbing, serving all of Pike County and the surrounding area with quality residential and commercial plumbing services. Damon Plumbing offers septic installation, drain cleaning, new water lines, remodel work for your home, or if you're planning a new build, make sure you include the Damon Boys. To get it right the first time, no job too big. Have you seen Brayton and Doug? Or too small? Sorry, Corby, couldn't resist. Call Brayton at 217-491-5415 or Doug at 217-617-2318. Damon Plumbing, recommended by our family for your family. Welcome back on the Little Jess Motors Halftime Show. At the break, it's Pittsfield 29, Payson Seymour 17. After the Lady Sockies had a seven-point lead several times, finally eclipsed the double-digit mark and lead by a dozen here at the halftime break. And we like to give you statistics on every halftime. Thank you to Little Jess Motors. Turnovers in the ball game. Pittsfield was seven, Payson was 16. The first quarter score was 14-10 Pittsfield. They had 15 in the second quarter, gave up seven. They lead 29-17 at halftime. Fouls in the ball game: two on Lila Simon, uh, two on Laney Marable, two on Allie Stanball, and a single foul on Grace Henry. On the other side, two fouls on Sam Hugenberg, one foul on Allie Bauer, and one on Ella Archer. It's a 29-17 Lady Sockies lead. Over the Lady Indians of Payson, we'll have individual stats and shooting percentages after this on the Little Jess Motors Halftime Show. Welcome to Douglas Automotive and Tire, your expert trek and car repair center in Pittsfield, Illinois. We provide full service from oil changes to new tires and everything in between. Contact us today to schedule service. We're located at 303 West Jefferson Street in Pittsfield, Illinois. Call 217-922-0064. That's 217-922-0064. Britain and the gang know cars, and if you need repairs, call Douglas Automotive today for all your repairs. United Community Bank has been serving our community in banking since 1973 and is a proud member of the Pittsfield Strong United Community. UCB brings you the latest banking technology, security, and convenience you expect. Delivered with friendly local service you deserve from your community bank. UCB invites you to stop in for a visit at number one professional plaza in Pittsfield or you can find them online at ucbbank.com. United Community Bank, the leader of community banking, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Sign up for a Saki Rewards debit card card. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies focus on your income. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on your outcome. That's why we know what it takes to succeed both on your balance sheet and in your life. It takes the right financial partner who looks at where you are now and where you want to go and design a financial plan to take you there so you can achieve the life you're after today and every day after. Focus on your financial outcome with Northwestern Mutual. Contact Sheila Davidsmeyer today. Her office is located at 311 West Washington in Pittsfield, Illinois. Or visit SheilaDavidsmeyer.nm.com, the Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Sports families, come check out Central Valley Sports, the new facility in town. Located three miles south of Winchester at 520 Winchester Glasgow Road. Batting cages, pitching mounds, pitching machines, and more. Open to all ages and skill levels. The facility is available for team rental, individual membership, and family memberships. Be sure to check out the Central Valley Sports Facebook page for more information and stay up to date on individual lessons and camps offered throughout the year. 29-17, the lead for the Pittsfield Lady Sockies here on the Little Jess Motors Halftime Show over Payson. Payson was 6 of 18 from the field, 33%, 0 of 4 from the arc, 5 of 7 from the free throw line, 71.4%. Six points in the first half for Sam Hugenberg, five for Matty O'Dear all in the first quarter. Four from Grace Klitz, two from Ella Archer. So good balance scoring for them for their 17. 29 points for Pittsfield, 13 of 33, 39%. Two of five from the arc, 40%. One of four from the free throw line, just 25%. Ten for Madison Frieden in the first half. Four points for Stor uh, Tori Stanball. Also three points from Grace Henry off the bench. Four from Taylor Peebles 
off the bench. Allie Stanball had two. Two for Sophie Gingler and the two guards, Laney Marable and Lila Simon, with a three-pointer apiece. Sockies lead at 29-17 here at halftime. The second half, play-by-play, comes your way on Central Illinois Sports. Is predator hunting your thing? Game Masters has you covered. We have way more than just deer and turkey hunting gear, safes, clothes, and gifts. Come check out our predator guns, calls, decoys, lights, traps, binoculars, bipods, tripods, and shooting sticks. Don't forget your thermal and night vision, rifle scopes, trapping equipment, and supplies. Whether your next game pursuit is big or small, runs or flies, Game Masters has what you need to get the job done. We're passionate about the outdoors. Go Team Go! Great Rivers Bank has a digital banking app worth cheering for. Move your money, pay your bills, deposit your checks. Hooray! Hooray! Set up a budget, manage your debit card, set up account alerts, and so much more. Our digital banking will give you a reason to stand up and cheer for banking. Learn more at greatriversbank.bank. Great Rivers Bank is an equal housing lender, member FDIC. If you have that drive and you want to do more with God, then there's opportunity there for you to do that. It's not the typical job that you would expect it to be. Like, it's just super fulfilling. When my life needed opportunity, I chose Dot. The Liquor Booth is your home for a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits. The Liquor Booth has two locations in Quincy, 3520 Broadway and 1500 North 12th Street. The Liquor Booth, where it's always happy hour. There's a road that makes all the difference. The difference between the good and the great. The road less traveled for the few who can handle the grind. One of hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership with a respect for heritage and tradition and a willingness to adapt. At Little Jess, we travel that road every day because we believe in that difference. And we dare our competition to try and keep up. Little Jess, serving the tri-state area since 1969. Just about ready for second half action as Pittsfield has the 29-17 lead over Pace and Seymour here at the break. Lady Sockies will have the basketball to start the second half of play. Pittsfield back home again on Thursday as they'll have Pleasant Hill Western here at Social Gym. It's a 6 o'clock varsity only start time again on Thursday and we'll have the action for you on Central Illinois Sports. And then the uh, Lady Sockies, for the first time in a long time, won't be in the North Green Tournament. They'll have a little time and play a couple more regular season games. I believe that's when that Pleasant Plains game gets worked in. It'll be next week, which is a tough, tough task. That's a very good squad and a good program that T.J. Frazee has been running for Pleasant Plains for a number of years now. First time Pleasant Hill, uh, Western, and Pittsfield played. It was a 29-27 game. This last time, 51-31 in the Beardstown Tournament. Uh, a little bit farther apart, but you can bet that Coach Shannon will have his girls ready on Thursday night. Hope we have a big crowd for that 6 o'clock start. Pittsfield basketball, here's Charlie with the call. Simon Gingler, Stamboff, Frieden, and Marable to start the second half for the Lady Sockies. We'll set Pace and Seymour's lineup once they get the possession. Gingler with it out top, goes to Marable right side, into Gingler, ball poked away from behind by Klitz and stolen away, then knocked out of bounds, it'll still head the way of Pace and Seymour, as the Lady Indians have Archer, Hugenberg, Klitz, Odier, and also the fifth young lady out there is Allie Bauer. When you come out of the locker room, your coach usually gives you a special and you don't want to turn it over on the first couple of passes, but that's how the Lady Saki start this third quarter. And now Pace and Seymour will return the favor as Hugenberg gets called for the travel. Coach Miller saying, jump stop, jump stop. How many times have we heard coaches say that over the years, Charlie? At least once today. First time this year. On top of it is Gingler over to Simon from 17. No good. Rebound down low to Stambaugh. She'll get it out to Marable from downtown, and she's good again from behind the arc. Two for two from there has six points. Sockies with their biggest lead. And makes it a 15-point game. Here's Hugenberg just dribbling between the defenders all the way down the court. And on the rebound, a foul will be called, I believe, on Lila Simon. I think I'll be darned. Her third, first team foul of the second half. 
And the inbounds pass is knocked around. Uh, looks like the tie-up not called here. Still loose. And now finally with the two-point takedown administered, they'll say Payson Seymour maintains the possession. And into the contest for the first time is the freshman, Deegan Allen, sitting down Simon. Inbounds pass tipped away. Ooh. Allen goes diving after it. And it's still Payson Seymour basketball. Here's Klitz, and she'll be called for the shuffle of the feet. The traveling wasn't as painful as the one that Tegan Allen <laughs> took on that. That was a rocket. She's aggressive. Yes, she is. Marable with a left side works it, to Stamball. And it's contagious when somebody comes in and does that for you. Yeah, it gives you a nice little spark. Here's Frieden in the paint. She's got good touch in there today. 12 for her without much competition in size, and they've doubled the score. Glitz with it in the backcourt, finds Hugenberg. She'll work it across, left side, little one-handed shot, but up and good by Allie Bauer. Her first two of the day. And makes it a 15-point game on the PCRE scoreboard, PCRErealestate.com. See all the latest local listings. Here's Marable on the wing, out top. Allen over to Gingler. She'll try the drive inside. Stops, pops, shoots, scores. Gingler with another two. Her four points on the night. Sometimes you forget that Gingler is just a freshman. A lot As of upside. Allen. Yeah. And here's a travel. Nope, they'll say she got it away, but it's still a turnover. Here's Allen on the run out into the front court. Finishes through contact and puts it in for two. She'll have the and one opportunity coming up here. Nice job by Allen on the play, and the foul is going to be called against Archer. It'll be her second, first team foul, second half. Lady Sockies with that 38-19, 19-point lead, biggest of the ball game. Allen with the free throw, no good, fighting for the ball, and it's going to be knocked out by Frieden, they say, and it'll be pacing basketball. So the Lady Sockies have doubled the score up. Once again, 38-19 to 19 with 5.44 left third quarter. You saw in the Northwestern Mutual replay when Allen made that, several of her teammates with a lot of excitement. They're happy for the young freshman to finish through that contact because they know that helps their team. Marable picks up the reach foul, her third, team second. You know, if it was a closer contest, you would not want to pick up those silly little fouls. Here comes Williams in. She welcomes the playing time as both of the starting guards in Simon and Marable on the bench right now. Archer looks to get it in, does so out front to Hugenberg. Puts it on the deck, headed to her left, and is fouled by Gingler. Gingler will pick up her first foul of the ball game, third team foul. One thing Sophie Gingler does give you, she's got tremendous wingspan, long arms, and really helps that defense and uses that ball side to knock the hand to knock the ball away a lot of times. Inbounds pass comes into Klitz and should be called for a travel. <laughs> might have been because she and Stanball, Stanball bumped into one another. Stanball might have helped her on that one just a bit. But just called the travel here and it heads the way of the Lady Sockies. It happened first. That's what it was. They had their backs to us. We couldn't really see it. Kingler, nobody guarding her. She'll dribble inside the arc, put up a jump shot. She says that's just like shooting in practice by the gym. Uh, all by yourself. She said, I've made it from there before. Now the biggest lead of the game is 21. I, I like her confidence on that. A little bit of fatigue, especially on the defensive side, starting to set in here for Pace and Seymour. Right side here is Klitz going to try the long ball. No good. A rebound. Oh, dear. Won't fall on the putback. And Deegan Allen with the rebound. She'll look to pass it into the front court. Loses it. And stolen away. The other way with it is Bauer. Finds Hugenberg. Out front to Archer, and she'll set it up for Pace and Seymour. Frieden did a nice job boxing out, but just didn't complete it by moving the girl away from the ball and then getting her arms up. Here's the ball stolen away into the front court. Allen puts it on the deck, drives inside, and it gets called for the travel. Got caught on her hip and one of the defensive people, and the turnover is a 10th against the Lady Sockies. 21 now for Payson. 437 left in the quarter. 40 to 19. Lady Sockies with the lead. Hugenberg on the dribble for Payson Seymour. Still on the bounce out top. Now pressured by Allen, looking for some help. And Archer, Williams steps in the passing lane and gets the steal. Good help side defense from the opposite side by Williams. I like Hannah's aggressiveness tonight. Here's Frieden from the free throw line and nothing but the bottom of the net. Have a night. 14 for her. Makes it 42-19. 
4.03 to play in the third. Klitz gets it out to Archer. Kicks to the corner. Hugenberg puts up a tray. No good. Rebound down to Frieden. It's just Frieden's second defensive board of the night. Into the front court, Williams finds Gingler. Again, kind of left alone. Over to Williams. She'll let it fly from the deep two. No good. Rebound tipped around. Comes down to Frieden. She'll put it up and in for another two. Offensive board put back. 16 points for her. 25-point lead now. 3.30 to play in the third. Hugenberg brings it up for Pace and Seymour. Dribbles toward the right wing. And Allen gets the steal. Allen with the larceny. Lamp at the other end is up with the left hand. Can't get it to go. Rebound down to Gingler. She'll put it up, won't fall. Foul that heads to the free throw line. Allen had lots of contact against her, but no foul. This time there was a foul called, and did they call that on Archer? Archer? They did. Her third, second team foul. Sophie Gingler goes to the free throw line to shoot two. She's got six. First one is too hard. Pike County Concrete, if you need concrete for your next job or project, give Pike County Concrete a call. 217-285-5548. They have locations in Pittsfield and Jacksonville to best serve the area. Gingler's second is a good one. She's got seven. Tape on the left arm. Tape or an ankle brace on the left side. Left side's been a tough one for her for 20-24 already. 3-10 to play on the third. Pittsfield's overall intensity really picked up when Deegan Allen came in the game, didn't it? It was 29-17 at halftime. You start figuring that out. That was a travel before the foul. No Ooh, foul called here. They're going to call the foul instead. I'll be darned. Going to call Allen with the foul. It'll be her first. And I'm certainly not questioning these guys, but uh, tell you what, that might have been a travel. Into the ball game comes Tori Stanball. Also... Macy Waters is it? No. Trying to pick up the third person here. In McClintock's into the game McClintock. along with Shelby Patterson and a foul on the Lady Sockies will send Pace into the free throw line for the remaining two minutes and 58 seconds of this third period. Shelby Patterson picks up the foul. And to the free throw line, Sam Hugenberg, six points on the night. She'll shoot a pair. Five for seven for the free throw line is space and 258 left in the quarter. First one's good by Hugenberg. She's got seven. Damon Emmerich at Great Rivers Bank here to help you with your next auto residential or commercial loan called Damon 217-285-4404. Second one by Hugenberg up on the bank shot. She was able to do what her teammate did a little bit ago. Bank one and squish the other. 45-21. Here's Stambaugh. Works it out to Patterson. Left side, Allen. She'll try the drive inside. Drew oh. a lot of contact. Went down hard to the court. And she kind of popped her head off the hard court. And she says, I'm all right. On the floor, they say. And that's against O'Deer, her first team third. Into the contest for Payson Seymour will be Eric Altoff. As it's ball to bounds underneath here for Pittsfield. Tory Stambaugh to throw it in. Gets it into Allen. Allen's left-hand shot is up and good. So Deegan Allen's got another two. Four for her on the day. And the lead back out to 26. 237 to play in the third. Hugenberg with it out front. These youngsters will combine with those girls from the eighth grade team and put a pretty good force together for next year's team. Here's a ball knocked away by Allen. And, man, she just uh, has a little different motor than everybody else, doesn't she? She's uh, kind of playing like Lily used to <laughs> on the floor a lot. Out of bounds. Got to like that. Grace Klitz to throw it in. Bounce pass comes to Archer. She clears a little space. Works it out to Hugenberg. Hugenberg puts up a three. It's off the mark, and Allen has the rebound. She'll turn and take it toward the front court. Works a pass down low to Peebles. Peebles, oh, across the way, finds a stand ball who has to kick it back out. Now to Patterson. She'll put it up the little runner with the right hand. It's good. Patterson with her first two, and actually McClintock had underneath. I always tell her, you're not 6'3", but you like to pretend you are when you're on the court. She's not afraid of anything down low. Look who she's guarding. Biggest girl on the other team, as always. Klitz with it. 
has picked it up, works it to Hugenberg, right back to Klitz and kind of a short hop pass. She'll put up a little fadeaway jump shot, won't go. And Deegan Allen with another rebound, her fourth in limited playing time. She'll take it into the front court, a little Euro step in in for two. Six for her now. Deegan Allen uh, kind of pushing for some more playing time as the Lady Sockies lead by 30 now and a travel in the backcourt as Grace Klitz had nobody around her. She has a smile on her face. She said, yep, that was a travel. Comes Here's Piper Henry into the game and also Macy Waters. No JV game, so trying to get some of these youngsters a little more playing time in this contest. All freshmen out there now? Huh? Uh, yeah. As people sit down. Yep, I think so. Stan is not a freshman. She, she's a sophomore. Here's a runner-up by Patterson, and she'll put it in for two. She said, I like the way that first shot felt. I'll do it again. Shelby Patterson with four off the bench. And on the PCRE scoreboard, it's a 53-21 Lady Saki lead with a minute to play in this third quarter. 24 points in the quarter for the Lady Saki. That's a good quarter. Here's a ball knocked out of bounds by Piper Henry. I don't know what that halftime speech was by Sidney Himmelman, but they might want to try that one again. David Marable might have joined him on that. Inbounds pass. Glitz tries the lob pass in. Finds the taller player in Archer who says, I'm the queen of the castle this time, and puts it up and in for two. <laughs> Macy said, what do you want me to do there? Here's McClintock on a jump shot from the baseline. No good. Rebound, Hugenberg. She'll push it into the front court. A little one-on-one. -on -one, drives in. Runner up too hard. Rebound put back as a tie-up. No, a Ooh, foul instead. We had a jump ball and on that one, maybe. Two shots coming up for Grace Klitz. Did they call that on? Called it on McClintock. Well, Josie kind of hides down there. She'll do that to you. Her first first one up is no good. That's by Grace Klitz. Lot Express here to serve you with walk-in medical care when you need it. Open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. every Monday through Saturday. Alana Express sees patients ages 18 months and older with no appointment necessary. Learn more at alanahospital.org. That was early. And so they will not count that. Now cost Klitz her first point of the second half. And the score remains 53-33 with seven, 37 seconds left in the quarter. Stamba onto the front court, finds Patterson. She got away with a travel, but the ball is out of bounds anyway as it slipped out of her mitts and out of bounds and a turnover on Pittsfield. 29 ticks left in the quarter. And a 30-point game with Payson Seymour down but on the attack. Unusual varsity boys game on Wednesday night at Pleasant Plains. Here's a shot, but up no good. Rebound put back. Archer won't fall. Piper Henry with the rebound for the Lady Sockies with 10 seconds to play in the third. McClintock with it. Looks in the paint. Finds her teammate in Piper Henry, whose shot won't go. Rebound loose on the court. And a tie-up with seven-tenths of a second to play. It'll be Pittsfield. Nope. It'll be a foul instead. I think McClintock's going to pick up the foul. Her second. And will shoot free throws. 15 the foul. End. Seven-tenths of a second, they'll go to the other end. 30-point lead here, but uh, if it gets under that, the clock will not run continuously in the fourth quarter until it gets to that. It may not. We've got Archer at the free throw line. First one is up, and no good. Bowlers Universe, you'll see them every Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Fridays until midnight, Saturdays 4 to midnight. Check out the great menu and always a fun time at Bowlers Universe in Pittsfield. Shot no good, rebound to the Lady Sockies, and we head to the fourth quarter with Pittsfield leading pace in Seymour, 53-23. Luke and Aaron Fessler at Fessler Insurance are here to help you with all of your insurance needs. Fessler Insurance, a country financial agency, provides life, health, auto, home, and farm insurance. Trust your insurance needs to the local folks at Fessler Insurance. Call for a quote today at 217 285 4429 or stop by at 1165 West Washington Street in Pittsfield for Fessler Insurance. Best Systems Insulators offer insulation for homes and commercial buildings throughout central Illinois and the surrounding areas. We take great care to ensure that the insulation products we use are the best fit for our clients and their project. We understand that different buildings have different needs and that each of our clients has a unique set of goals. Let us work with you to find the best solution for your next project. Call Best Systems Insulators at 217-285-6005. That's 285-6005. Or visit them online at GoBestSystems. Systems.com. 
Kate Marable, real estate broker with Hometown Real Estate, would like to say good luck to all area teams and hopes everyone has a successful and healthy season. When you're in the market for a new home or would like to sell your home, be sure to call Kate Marable. Kate is a lifelong resident of the area and has experience in first-time home buyers, FHA, USDA, and VA loans. Call Kate Marable at 217-370-9809. That's 370-9809 for Kate Marable and Hometown Real Estate. Back to live action here in quarter number four as Pittsfield has a 30-point lead. Running clock here in the fourth quarter is Torrey Stambaugh gets the ball and it's called for a travel. Pittsfield was 25 of 50, 50 percent, three of six from the arc. Good shooting there, but two of nine from the free throw line. Ladies from Payson are eight of 28 and 0 for seven, but they're eight of 13 from the charity stripe. Archer with it out top. She'll feed the post to Klitz. Klitz with it out there. Turns and faces the basket. Now steps behind the arc, puts up a deep ball, no good. Rebound out of bounds off of Macy Waters. It'll stay with the Seymour Lady Indians. Piper Henry just about blocked that three-pointer from three foot away. She's got good height and good range there. Hope her dad's feeling better. Inbounds pass comes in to O'Deer, whose shot won't go, and Piper Henry with her second rebound. Yep. Works the outlet pass to Stambaugh. Now Patterson just underway here in period number four. Ball goes down in the corner to McClintock, has already used the dribble and then double dribbles. 12th turnover of the ball game against the Lady Sockies, 53-23. Clock is running continuously. Shout out to her old buddy, Coach Ken Stouffer, recovering at home, I do believe now. Kenny, get better. We need you at the courts. Look forward to seeing you there, hopefully, by the Winchester Tournament. Basketball courts? You bet. Tennis courts? Supreme Court? Kenny Stover could do it all, I guarantee it. Here's a shot put up no good, and a foul called on Piper Henry. Piper's going to pick up her first, first team foul the second half. On the floor. Out of bounds on the baseline here for the Lady Indians. I bet he's not a pickleball person. What are you on bat? Uh, I'd say at one point he might have been. Here's a shot put up by Klitz, no good. A rebound put back. Oh, dear, won't fall. And this time the rebound run down by Tori Stambaugh. See McClinock boxing out the girl about a foot and a half taller in there. McClintock with it on the right side. Throws it out top. Patterson over to Stamball. Stamball puts up a little runner. No good. And the rebound down to Hugenberg for Pace and Seymour. She'll bring it quickly into the front court. Ooh, good find. Down low to Bauer who puts it up and in for two. Bauer's got two more. Allie Bauer with the basket for the Lady Indians. Waters on the wing. In the corner to McClintock. Looks at the high post, not open. Instead has to get it out top. Patterson over to Stambaugh. Deep in the corner, it's Waters with a shot, no good. Rebound down to McClintock. She'll put it on the deck, drive in, shot block. And the rebound, Tori Stambaugh saves it in. Now bodies on the floor after it. And Stambaugh came free, puts up a three, no good. And on the rebound, coming away with it will be Ali Bauer. And to the front court, Klitz. She'll have it with the behind-the-back dribble. Gets inside. Runner-up is good by Grace Klitz. Nice take to the rim. Six for her. First points in the second half. And makes it 53-27 of the PCRE scoreboard. A little 4-0 run for Payson to start the fourth. Here's Patterson. Now her shot blocked and a rebound down to O'Deer. To Hugenberg into the front court. Knocked away by Patterson. And somehow that ball stayed in bounds. She saves it and keeps it alive for the turnover. Good hustle by Patterson that time. Stamball on the run into the front court now. Has it stolen away by Hugenberg. And then it's called for the foul. Stamball will pick up the foul. Second of the quarter. I think it's the first on her. And Peebles going to come into the game. I was just going to say, you know, the girls that are out there right now have all been good basketball players. But they've all been role players with some of those other girls being the key components to scoring. And people like Tegan Allen and Reese Ramsey have scored a lot of the points when these girls were playing. So this gives them a chance to be a little bit aggressive on the offensive side. Lob pass down low. They find Archer. Her shot no good. A weak side rebound put back up and won't fall for Matty O'Deer. And the rebound down to Stamball for Pittsfield. Stamball's second board, and it's the land of the Giants down there against him. Down low McClintock. Little turnaround move. No good. And the rebound pulled in to Archer. To Hugenberg, wants to run the other way. 3.50 left in this one. 
Out top, Archer near the half-court line. Guarded by Waters. Kind of bumps off the defender. Works to Klitz on the right side. She'll drive in. Pull up jump shot. No good. Rebound down to Bauer. Keeps it alive to her teammate. Shot put up is no good. Rebound. Ooh. We'll see a <laughs> hold called here on Macy Waters. Macy said, I'm going to be called for a foul, and I took the beating on that one. Waters is going to pick up the foul. Looked like the bully got her that time. Third team foul. Here's a ball knocked away by Patterson into the bleachers. Patterson with that long reach, too, kind of like Hannah Williams. Three minutes to play in this one. A lot of former Lady Sockies here tonight watching the game. Inbounds pass stolen away by Peebles. She's got the takeaway, running layup, won't go, and on the rebound, Grace Klitz has it for Pace and Seymour. She'll slow things down a bit for this Lady Indian squad as they trail 53-27 with 240 to play. Klitz has her pass, tip and stolen away, Peebles with another steal, and she's forearm checked into the boards. And to the front court, Stamball, she'll try to drive in, up off the window and in for two. No icing call, 55-27 on the PCRE real estate notch and scoreboard. They might have been offsides. <laughs> little blue line violation. Here's Hugenberg with it, works a pass down low. Deer is on the floor and Don Miller wants a timeout. It's an Adams Fiber timeout. They're local and providing the ultimate internet experience with Wi-Fi 6 and internet packages with speeds up to one gigabit. Visit Follow the Fiber. Net. Griffin Signs in Time at 122 South 9th Street in Quincy is a full-service sign company that can complete any project, from fully wrapping your entire fleet of vehicles, digital signs, storefronts, to creating small banners and signs. The right and professional signage is the difference of getting the job, heading folks in the correct direction to find you, or creating a brand recognition for potential customers. Put the right signs in your customer's mind with Griffin Signs in Time. Call 217-228-7470. 209 to play. Time out taken by Pace and Seymour as Don Miller didn't want to give up the uh, turnover there. And it's ball to bounds underneath for the Lady Indians. Don's got his kids here with him tonight. They're doing some details for him on the sideline. Here's a block three-pointer. Rebound down to Ella Archer. She'll put it up and in for two and get an opportunity at the old-fashioned three-point play. Archer's got six on the night, and the foul's going to go against Macy Waters, her second. Fourth team foul. Two minutes and counting. Archer looking for her seventh point of the night. Up, in and out, no good. Over the back that time was Grace Klitz. Called for the foul, and into the contest for the Indians will come Eric Altoff, the freshman. She'll sit Grace Klitz down on the bench for the evening. It's got to be the little sister of those two Klitz boys that were so talented, I would TJ think. TJ and Gage, I would say maybe some relation. Not about, I'm not sure about a sister or not, but I would say some relation for sure. Here's a miss three. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay the way of Pace and Seymour here. Patterson makes me laugh. Shelly Patterson... Uh, or Shelby, she's kind of about halfway between dancing and playing basketball. Just kind of bouncing all over, but causing a lot of havoc. She's a, a taller lot of pass than down low to Odeer, who puts it up and in for two. Seven for her now. She had the height advantage and used it well that time. Under a minute to play. Stan Bott works it in the corner to McClintock. At the post now on top of Patterson. High post Piper Henry. Comes over to Stanball on the baseline with 40 ticks to play. Pittsfield going to win their fourth in a row and move to nine and seven on the season. And they'll host Pleasant Hill Western here on Thursday night at Voschel Gymnasium and a six o'clock varsity only start. Here's a ball now knocked free, run down in the corner by Macy Waters with 20 seconds to play in the contest. Looking into Henry. Henry will put it up high glass, no good. And the rebound pulled in by Odeer. A jump ball, and it is, well, Pace and Seymour basketball, the official says. And it might just be the final play of the game. 
as Hugenberg will get it. She'll dribble it toward the front corner, and her shot, well, she wasn't going to take one, and that's the final of this contest. Pittsfield defeats Bates and Seymour, 55-31. We take you to the Blessing Health System postgame show with final stats and analysis. We'll also name our player of the game next. The heart is the hardest working muscle in your body. If something goes wrong with it, you need a medical team that works just as hard. You need Blessing Health's Open Heart Surgery Team, celebrating 20 years of delivering life-saving care to tri-state residents. Patients and families choose Blessing Health's Open Heart Surgery Team for its experience, quality, and heartwarming compassion. Get the most out of your hardworking heart. Kate Marable, real estate broker with Hometown Real Estate, would like to say good luck to all area teams and hopes everyone has a successful and healthy season. When you're in the market for a new home or would like to sell your home, be sure to call Kate Marable. Kate is a lifelong resident of the area and has experience in first-time home buyers, FHA, USDA, and VA loans. Call Kate Marable at 217-370-9809. That's 370-9809 for Kate Marable and Hometown Real Estate. Griffin Signs in Time at 122 South 9th Street in Quincy is a full-service sign company that can complete any project, from fully wrapping your entire fleet of vehicles, digital signs, storefronts, to creating small banners and signs. The right and professional signage is the difference of getting the job, heading folks in the correct direction to find you, or creating a brand recognition for potential customers. Put the right signs in your customer's mind with Griffin Signs in Time. Call 217-228-7470. Chris Nichols, managing broker and owner of PCRE Real Estate and Auction, has over 15 years of experience specializing in selling hunting and recreational properties and farmland. Chris prides himself on combining buyers and sellers, both local and from around the country, to help both parties achieve their land investment goals. Chris takes the time to walk clients through the process of selling their property from start to finish, making the experience feel seamless and enjoyable. Contact Chris Nichols and PCRE Real Estate and Auction at 217-473-3777. It's time to be thinking about tax planning. You can count on Illinois FBFM for accounting, consulting, and tax preparation for farmers and businesses in Pike, Brown, and Adams Counties. Call 217-593-7233. That's 593-7233. Illinois FBFM can take care of your farm accounting needs. Get your accounts in order for this tax season. Contact Jesse Schumann and Emily Matthews at Illinois FBFM in Camp Point, working for you. At Farmer State Bank, we believe in community, teamwork, and success. We're thrilled to announce that we've been named the best place to work in Illinois and the best community bank in America this year. Join us on this winning team where your dreams take center court at Farmer State Bank. We're a team. Discover the difference. The best place to bank, the best place to work. Because when our community wins, we all win. Where community, excellence, and opportunity come together. Farmer State Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Derek Harris is your Pike and Adams County area Edward Jones financial advisor. Derek Harris's most important goals are yours. That's why Derek will take the time to understand your needs so he can recommend personalized strategies with your goals in mind. Contact Derek Harris today at 217-222-7173. Knowing you, that's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Member SIPC. Welcome back on the Blessing Health System post-game show. Final score in this one, Pittsfield wins in a runaway 55-31 to move their record to 9-7 on the season. Payson Seymour drops to 3-19 on the year. And Jack's got to look at some final stats. Well, it was all about the third quarter because Pittsfield came out of the locker room and really spread things out. And the fact that they were able to get 60 shots off to only 39 for Payson. A lot of that because of 27 turnovers for Payson. 13 on the Lady Sockies. Nobody fouled out of the ball game. Pittsfield was 26 of 60 for 43%. 3 of 8 from the arc, 37.5%. Just 2 of 9 from the free throw line. 12 of 39 for Payson, 30.8%. 0 of 8 from the arc. 8 of 14 from the free throw line. Did a nice job there. They were led in scoring with the 8 points. Sam Hugenberg, 6 of those in the first half. 7 from Matty O'Dear. 5 of those came in the first half. 5 for Grace Klitz on the night. And uh, 
Ella Archer added six points. Four of those came in the second half. Four points from Allie Bauer. For the Lady Sockies on the evening, 16 points from Madison Frieden. Four rebounds to go with that. Seven points from Sophie Gingler, along with six points from Tori Bauer. Six from Deegan Allen off the bench. Four from Taylor Peebles off the bench. Grace Henry added three. Four points from Shelby Patterson. And also, let's see, Allie Stanball had two on the night. Laney Marable had two threes for six total points and a three from Lila Simon that actually started the game. And uh, after that, it got a little quiet from most of them, but a 55-31 win for the Lady Saki. Time to name our player of the game, presented by Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Derek Harris. Financial investments are important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, parents, and mentors. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones financial advisor, understands this. That's why Derek Harris is a proud sponsor of the player of the game on Central Illinois Sports. And how about another good night for Madison Freed and a lot of good touch in the paint for her tonight. Finishes with 16 points in the win for the Lady Sockies. That's going to do it from Volshaw Gymnasium for Jack and John Hull. I'm Charlie Hill thanking you for joining us. Pittsfield defeats Pace and Seymour on the Lady side, 55-31. It's been another Central Illinois Sports presentation.